Welcome to the Bright Side. We're going to begin with a prayer, Psalm 127. <speaking in Hebrew> A song of essence for Solomon. If the Lord does not build a house, then its builders labor upon it in vain. If the Lord will not guard a city, the vigilance of its watchmen is in vain. It is in vain for you, you who rise early, who sit up late, and who eat the bread of tension, for in fact he gives his loved ones sleep. Behold, the heritage of the Lord is children. The fruit of the womb is a reward. As arrows in the hand of a mighty man, so are the children of youth. Fortunate is the man who has his quiver full of them. They will not find themselves shamed when they speak with enemies in public places. Join me in the mitzvah of tzedakah, They say, what is the difference between a Jewish pessimist and a Jewish optimist? The pessimist says, things are so bad, they can't get any worse. And the Jewish optimist says, oh yes, they can. Today's story takes us back to the 19th century. A great spiritual leader was the Tzemach Tzedek. He was the third Lubavitcher Rebbe. And the story is told of a particular chassid, a follower of his, whose son became gravely ill. And the father of the child was advised to travel to the small village of Lubavitch in white Russia to seek the advice and blessing of this great Rebbe the Tzemach Tzedek. With a heavy heart, he started traveling to seek counsel and advice and blessing for his seriously ill son. And in response to his request for a blessing, the Tzemach Tzedek said the following words in Yiddish. Tracht gut, wird sein gut. Think good, and it'll be good. The man decided he's going to have this shift in his mindset. He took these words to heart, and for the entire journey home, he filled his mind with only optimistic thoughts. He tried to strengthen his faith and trust in God, and as he arrived home, he was shocked to see that his son had completely recovered from the illness. He was back to his normal self. My father's cousin was a rabbi by the name of Josh Gordon. He lived in California, passed away a few years ago. And he told a story that happened back in the early 70s when he first became a shaliach, when, he, when he, he and his wife first decided to become an emissary of the Rebbe in the San Fernando Valley in California. And this was around the time of the Rebbe's 70th birthday. And in honor of this uh, special occasion, he received a special blessing from the Rebbe. And as he tells the story, the Rebbe blessed him and he said, make firm decisions with alacrity, work hard and have faith and trust in God. And Rabbi Gordon talks about how these short wise words became the guiding force in the decades that followed in his work, in the communal work that he did 
in California. He says you have to wake up early in the morning and work hard. You have to do so with alacrity. But always remember that the key to success is a person's faith and trust in Almighty God. And then your work will succeed. The Rebbe always urged people to approach things with optimism, to have a positive attitude. And on one occasion, this was a little bit later in 1985, Rabbi Gordon says that he and his wife faced a significant challenge. The details are not that important, but it was a very, very serious challenge to their work. And his wife was feeling very stressed and anxious about it. And so he suggested to his wife, why don't you write a letter to the Rebbe? After all, we are his followers, we are his emissaries. Why don't you ask for a blessing? And Mrs. Gordon writes a 10-page letter to the Rebbe outlining all of the problems, all of the obstacles and challenges that they're facing. And the letter gets mailed to New York. And as the letter is received by the Rebbe's office, the Gordons receive a phone call from New York. The Rebbe's message to them was, time and again in your holy work, you have imagined that the situation that you find yourselves in is the end of the world. Or as the Yiddish expression goes, a gewald. So you're really in deep trouble. And then somehow you saw how the situation was transformed and you were able to see the good inherent in that challenge. Therefore, remember to always keep these words, this command of tracht gut, but sein gut, in your mind. To think optimistically and things will turn out well. And again, Rabbi Gordon says, from that day on, every time we faced a challenge that we thought was insurmountable, we didn't know how we're going to overcome this particular challenge I reminded myself that last time things looked bad too, and somehow we were able to overcome. Somehow everything turned out fine. Somebody once said that our devils are never quite what we expect when we meet them face to face. So there are times that we go through significant challenges. And the worst outcome seems inevitable. And then we have to remember the times that these situations turn themselves around and our anxiety was really uncalled for. This can be a pattern, a negative thought process that keeps coming. And in the end, all the time that we spent in fear and stressed and anxious, was a waste, it was not good for our health, it was not good for everyone. So the question we ask ourselves today is, what was I worrying about one year ago? What was I so worried and anxious about a year ago today? And am I still worried about those things or did things get sorted out? Let us strengthen our faith and trust in God and the act, the decision itself to have a positive attitude to have an optimistic mindset and outlook on life will help to get us there and to allow us to see the bright side. Our guest today is Dr. Steve Lebovich, who did his training back in Philadelphia at Temple University Hospital, as well as Fox Chase Cancer Center, and is now practicing as a urologist in New Jersey. Welcome to The Bright Side, Steve. Great Thanks. to have you. Thanks for having me. So let's talk a little philosophy. As Jews, we, we look at God as, uh, as the ultimate 
healer, the healer of all flesh. And of course, a doctor has a lot of power in terms of being the agent of healing. So how does your faith impact your, your um, position as a doctor when a patient comes to you? Um, does it ever, do, do you ever talk about um, spirituality and faith with your patients? Is that something that ever comes up or is it strictly medicine? I mean, philosophically, I think positive um, reinforcement in whatever the, the patient may be into. If they are religious, you kind of promote it. You give them sort of, um, you guide them into um, believing more into those things. In the sense of positive um, feelings um, definitely improves um, outcomes in certain things. Um, a lot of the things that I treat now uh, tend to be some, some stress-related symptoms that are in urology, whether it's uh, urinary frequency or erectile dysfunction. You know, a lot of those things are, and especially with what we have going on right now with COVID, and, you know, a lot of these things are, um, we're in a very stressful time. So if somebody is a spiritual person, you know, I'm all for it. Um, and if they're not, then I try to give them some guidance into other things, like meditation or, you know, acupuncture or something else that would uh, try to relieve some of their stress burden in order to help them with their, um, with their treatment plan. As a physician, do you believe that there's any connection with a patient's thoughts, for example, positive thinking, optimism, and their physical healing? Um, a hundred percent. Um, I don't think it's the only component, but I think our minds are very important. And, um, Hey, just feeling well in general, if you've got a good outlook on things and you feel good in general, uh, positive habits and, and whatnot, chances are you're, you're not feeling aches and pains as much as some of the other, you know, people. Um, and I, and I think, you know, I have patients who deal with cancer and, and some of them just just have this different outlook on life and they just feel good about things. Despite them having serious problems, they, they come in, you know, looking and feeling better than some of the patients that have, you know, some minor issues. You just look at these two people and you wonder what the difference is. And I think it's the positive attitude. And I think uh, having one... Um, you know, being surrounded by people who are promoting um, your well-being and not um, sort of making you feel like this sick patient, I think definitely has a benefit, for sure. Okay, great. So the, uh, there's, there's, a, there's a correlation between the psychological science of positive thinking and the spiritual side, which also promotes um, a positive mindset um, when we're encouraged to have faith and trust in God, who's uh, the healer of all flesh. Correct. Um, I, you know, I, and, and there's, there's, you know, many studies that have shown um, that to be the case. I think it's a matter of, um, you know, what I see, you know, in my practice, I see, I see a lot of spiritual, whether they're, you know, Christian or Catholics or you know, Jewish, um, you know, the ones that are, you know, in um, these communities and, you know, they go to church or they go to the synagogue, they daven, um, you know, they, they, they have a different um, outlook on things, I think, in general. Now, Steve, if you could tell us um, how this pandemic has affected your work as a doctor, of course, Everyone is impacted in, in different ways. We've all been affected. Um, it's been a very, very difficult time and challenging time for everyone. Um, but from your perspective, how has it changed your work as a doctor? I mean, in the initial phases, we were at full force doing our uh, seeing, you know, 
a lot of patients a day. I mean, we were, we were really busy. Um, we were doing a lot of elective surgeries, um, a lot of scheduled emergency, uh, a lot of scheduled, um, you know, procedures. Uh, we were doing a lot of emergencies. And then one day in March, it just stopped. It all came to a halt. Um, so, you know, instead of working five days a week, um, for a little while, we weren't working at all. We just shut it all down um, for about a week or two. And then we were going to one day a week per physician. Um, all elective surgeries were, were put on hold. Um, you know, the government allowed us to start seeing patients sort of in the manner we're doing this interview, which was kind of nice. So we started uh, being able to do some telemedicines and, you know, patients would reach out and we'd be able to address their needs. Um, but the practice as a whole, the practice of medicine changed drastically because the focus became sort of maintaining patients out of the hospital. So if there were emergencies, kind of addressing them quickly, seeing patients for urgent matters so that we kept them out of the hospital for sort of normal urologic problems. Um, but it definitely changed our ability to do things. I mean, those things were taken away from us as well as the patients. And, and what has happened also is there is a fear factor. So patients, now that they're allowed to walk into our office, are still kind of scared. Um, this area of, of New Jersey was hit pretty hard, as was New York City. Um, thousands of patients and lots of patients in the emergency rooms, lots of patients in the intensive care units, um, intubated. So we saw a drastic rise as far as you know the United States pretty quickly, and now we're at a low, um, you know, hundreds of patients in New Jersey, I think as a whole um, per day rather than, than thousands. Um, so, you know, this area for the time being seems safer. I think the bigger thing that came out of this was um, the masks. I think um, wearing some form of mask um, when you go out, um, as well as in our practice, you know, we're wearing masks for every patient. Um, we don't allow patients in our office without a mask. They are temperature checked. Um, but I think that has been sort of a big deal as far as prevention and transmission. Um, significantly, I, I, I probably had my first patient with COVID in my office with symptoms, wearing a mask, um, probably in the third week of all this. And um, everybody's wearing a mask and nobody got it. So, and, and, and it happened a few more times since then as well. Some employees got it. Um, from from you know they're from wherever they, they they live or wherever they were going, um, but um, you know I mean it's changed somewhat. I think things are going back to normal somewhat, but uh, normal is a new norm. But it also is it's everybody. It's not just it's not just me. It's not just medicine. It's it's you know for the first time on this planet, we, you know as humans we have all been experiencing the exact same thing at the exact same time, which is very interesting. That is, that is a great point. Um, it's a universal challenge that we're all dealing with. Um, there's been a, a recognition of how critical your work is and, uh, you know, healthcare heroes, essential workers, um, putting themselves out on the front line. Um, people recognize the sacrifices that you make. And um, I wonder if you can share with us you know, we've talked about uh, some of the challenges. I wonder if you can share with us any bright side that you have found going through this experience. Um, amidst the obstacles, what have you found, if anything, that has perhaps been a silver lining of this crisis? I think there have been many. I think there have been many, I think. Um... You know, at the beginning, the slowdown, I think uh, the positives were we all kind of were able to take a step back. You know, we didn't feel like there was anywhere to be or to go. Everything was closed. Work was shut down. Um, that was kind of universal. And it was kind of nice being at home, you know, being at home with the kids, um, being present, um, not feeling like there was, um, you know, something scheduled. Um, you know, and then unfortunately, I think lots of things started to creep up as far as like homeschooling and all these extra things. And I think we lost an opportunity to kind of really reshape our world into a more, um, uh, maybe a less stressful environment, um, you know. But 
but at least there was an awareness of that. And I think the other thing that came out of it is you see how well different groups of people sort of met um, this event with, with a, by excelling. I mean, whether it's physicians, as you say, whether it's the nurses that, or you know, everybody at the hospital systems, but also like delivery systems, the people in the grocery stores, um, you know, who are essentially on the front line. So, you know, you kind of have an appreciation for people and, and what they put themselves through. Um, you know, we, were, we most people were just asked to stay at home and, and, and you know, get their food deliveries and just like watch some TV and, and take it easy for a little bit, which was, I think, important for this problem. You know, when you're asked to do something like that, that's what we need to do. And like I said, now with these masks, I think we've also learned that this may be a good way to combat the regular flu. During those months, you kind of wear a mask and wash your hands and, you know, we might see less flu um, uh, deaths and, and whatnot later, later in the year and, and in the fall, but who knows? There's lots of positives. So, so one of the things that you mentioned was a realignment of priorities where um, people recognized, you know, the, the need to slow down and not get so um, stressed and distracted by the demands and the burdens of everyday life. And uh, hopefully we can cherish that and uh, take it with us as, the, yeah. as we get to the new normal. I hope so. And, and again, if we're, if we're hit with another, another one of these, you know, shutdown moments, you know, it may become more, um, it may force us to make that decision, you know, really slow it down and reevaluate what we really need and what we, um, you know, it's, it's interesting during this whole process, you know, shuls and davening and all that stuff was shut down and the community. And that's, that's a weird thing. Even though we've like built this community online now, you can daven online and you can do a whole host of things. Like that part of it was, I think a weird thing, not being able to do some of those things. Um, but, uh, you know, yeah, slowing down is a, is a, is I think a, uh, I think a very good beneficial part of, of what we just went through. Steve, thank you so much for taking the time to, uh, to share with us. The, um, first of all, I want to thank you for everything you're doing every day to, uh, to bring healing to your patients and by extension to be an agent of God in bringing healing to the world. Um, and thank you for sharing your unique perspective on, uh, on things. And it's, uh, it's, it's been uh, very enlightening. Thank you. Thanks for having me. This is great. It was great seeing you. Same here, Steve. So we'll be in touch. Sure. Definitely. I really appreciate your time. Anytime. Yeah. Thank you. All, right. Bye, All the best. Thank you for joining us today on the Bright Side program. If you enjoyed this program, we ask that you consider even a small contribution to B'nai Abraham Chabad to help these programs continue. I want to thank our sponsors for making this possible and wish you a wonderful week.